Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Be Your Bay podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weaver. Today, I really want to talk about attracting ideal clients. And it's actually comes really timely for me because I'm working on a new offer that's a low ticket thing. And so I'm diving back into ideal client research. And so I wanted to talk about it today on the podcast. And this is not doing ideal client, like where do they shop? What are they wearing? Um, it's so much more in depth. And how can we use our, our human design to attract as well? So it's not just about them, but it's bridging the gap between who we are authentically and what they're looking for and what they need help with. Okay. So I know attracting ideal clients is like always on the forefront of any entrepreneurs, especially spiritual entrepreneurs mind, right? Like we want to be working with people that we love. We want to feel like when we get on a session with someone that they get out what they need to get out, right? That they're getting the results that we promise. I know so many of us, myself included, like I don't want to promise something if I can't deliver on it. I don't want to promise that you're going to make a million dollars from a sales page that I write because there are so many more facets and things that go into it that you me just writing a sales page doesn't necessarily guarantee it, right? And we as spiritual entrepreneurs want to feel, keep in, in integrity with what we're selling, what we're offering, right? And I know a lot of times that can easily end up being watering down our message and watering down what we are selling because we are afraid to stick a claim, right? So I want to reiterate first, before we dive into attracting ideal clients, that your core message, your unique selling point is not, or it's different than what your offer is. It's different than um, your ideal client, okay? What you're known for and this process, whether you're a generator and you have a unique method, or if you're a manifester and you're a big vision or a projector in your system and you knew unique way of solving uh, a problem, that's your unique selling point. You don't have to have an ideal client for that. It can be super, super broad. Like you could say spiritual entrepreneurs. That's your ideal client for your method, right? Because we use that unique selling point and we package it in different ways. So your offer can be packaged in a million ways, right? It can be one-on-one, it can be a digital product, it can be a course, it can be a workshop, it can be literally the, the ways are endless in how you package it. We really only need to be super concerned with our ideal client when we're offering something, when we're putting together our offer and how we're packaging it and, and positioning it. That's when we need to go, ooh, okay, now I need to get into the mind of my ideal client, who I want to be sitting on the other side of the screen, whether that's in a one-on-one -on -one session or who I want to buy this, because that's when we need to get the nitty gritty so that that person does get the result, right? If we're not super clear on our ideal client for an offer, that's when we get into muddy territory where we're going to possibly attract people that aren't going to get a result. Um, my, I've done this before where I haven't been super specific. I haven't really been clear on who I wanted in that container. And I have attracted people that weren't right for it, that ended up, we ended up um, canceling the contract because it wasn't an aligned agreement. Um, they weren't getting out what I wanted them to get out because it, they weren't the right person, right? On the flip side, when I get really, really clear on who I want in this specific container, it's so much easier to sell to them. It's so much easier to guarantee something because you know that you can get a result from them because you know who they are and what they're struggling with. Um, okay, so with that all in mind, we do need to do some client research. And I know, I know, I hate it too. 
I, it's not my favorite thing. I want to make it up. I want to go, I know who they are because I was once them. And that may be true. You may have been that person at one point in your life, but do you really remember everything that you felt and the thoughts that you were thinking in that moment? Likely it's probably changed and you remember it in a different way than really how what happened or be right. And it could possibly change a little bit now in terms of circumstances and what people are dealing with now. It may be similar, but it's slightly different. So when we do ideal client research, we're, what we're looking for is the way that they see the problem. Not so much in words, sometimes words, yes, but it's the way that they see the problem. How are they approaching this issue and the niche that you're in? The um, so some questions to think about are, what are they struggling with right now? Asking them, what are you struggling with right now as it pertains to messaging and copy? Or as it pertains to your relationships? What are you struggling right now within your intimate relationships? What's the most important thing when you're buying? So if you're going to hire a coach, what's the most important thing? that you want from that coach? Is it accountability, you know, that you want to get into their head of like, what are they really seeking when they hire a coach? Um, if it's a digital product or a course, like what are you really looking for when you buy a course or a digital product or, right? Another question is, if you could solve the problem today, what would that look like? what would it be, right? If you could solve anything in your business as it pertains to the niche, I guess, what would it be? And this gets at the red hot paint. And for me, this is super, super important to understand as a copywriter, because we want to meet people where they're at. What is the thing that they're struggling with? So many Spiritual entrepreneurs want to solve the deeper issue. I want to solve your, your childhood trauma. That's not the red hot pain of someone right now, right? The childhood trauma could be showing up in they're arguing with their spouse all the time and you can help them solve the argument, right? And we can meet them where they're at with that, like we're gonna figure out how to communicate with your spouse in a way that feels like everyone is being heard, right? And then on the back end is where you like, we're doing childhood trauma. That's where you bring in your unique selling point in that your way of helping them work through relationship issues is dealing with childhood trauma, okay? So we're meeting them where they're at in that red hot paint. But if we don't know what that red hot pain is, then we're kind of left with like what we think they are is the problem, right? And what we think is the problem is the deeper underlying thing that they don't see yet. By and large, they don't know that that's the problem. What they think is the problem is that their husband doesn't communicate or doesn't talk to them, right? So I hope I'm making sense with that. Like, you gotta meet them where they're at with that red hot pain. So asking them what. If we could solve something right now as it pertains to your relationships, as it pertains to your messaging, what would it be? And then another question would be, if you waved a magic wand, what would you fix in your business as it pertains, or, you know, as it pertains to your subject? Okay, so if you could wave the magic wand, what would you fix in your relationships right now? As it if you could wave that magic wand, what would you change within your messaging right now? Again, it gets at even another way of looking at that red hot pain. What is, how are they looking at it? And how can you solve that for them? If you can do that, it's so much easier to sell the container, right? Even if it's a high ticket one-on-one -on -one container, you still need to solve that red hot pain that they're dealing with. And you go deeper, right? And you solve it in a way that allows them to be able to go out into the world and not need you and all the things, right? That's 
those questions are super, super important. Some other questions that you can ask are, um, why would you hesitate buying this? Um, why, what would make you want to spend money on this? Some things like that, where you're getting at what's really holding them back. Why would they not invest in um, a coaching container, things like that? It's really important because then you can address that in your copy, in the messaging on your sales page. Um, uh, lost my place. Ah. Okay. Now that we know what they're struggling with and what how they're viewing the problem, right? How they're viewing, viewing this challenge. We can use the definition in our own human design to solve it. So what do I mean by this? So your, when we look at the human design chart, the definition is the energy that is consistent for you. It's the things that you are really here to master, right? Your white areas, the areas that are white in your chart, um, both defined centers and channels, things like that. That's where you're taking in information from other people and amplifying it back out. In those areas, you're here to experience what it's like for other people. You're ex here to experience a wide range of that energy, okay? The definition is what you're here to have mastered. Now, I don't um, want you going out and like selling something that you're not embodied. That is super, super important with human design is that you are embodied with that energy first and foremost. But the definition is areas that you can start to play with and really hone in on like what your gifts are within that definition. So if we take the example of messaging for me, because that's the easiest one comes to mind. So we know the pain, like you want to attract ideal clients. You want to have messaging that's magnetic. You want to be concise in what you say. I can use my definition, the things that I have defined in my chart, um, like the channel to my spleen, the enthusiasm and mastery. Like what have I mastered? I mastered really understanding how the energy behind words matters and how do we harness it and how do we be specific within your messaging to attract the ideal clients that you want in an authentic way, a way that feels good for you. Um, I can look at my defined centers, my root, and how um, I can give you templates. I can give you a to-dos um, to help you move along, right? And not get stuck wondering what the heck to write. I'm going to give you that place to start so you don't have those excuses anymore to procrastinate, right? I can use the sacral in how much joy and like passion I have for what I do. I'm emulating that within the copy as well. I can use my G-Center, my defined G-Center, and knowing who I am and helping you see who you are and how um, stepping more into your own identity allows people to, uh, it, that's what attracts people to you. When the more that you are your authentic self, the more people are attracted to you. And so helping you figure out what that is for you, um, helping you tap into that energy of who you are, um, the throat and being just confident in what I'm saying and um, that I trust the words that are coming out of my mouth are going to be what you need to hear. Um, so that's how we can start to mold this container to who we are that authentically are, but then also meet our ideal client exactly where they're at with the thing that they're struggling with. So we're authentically speaking and attracting the ideal clients. Okay. Um, I also want to mention that like your mindset is so huge in this. Uh, so huge. I personally have dealt with my own mindset issues. I have an open head and open ajna. I overthink everything. All in the what ifs and the shoulds. I get it. I should do this. I should do that. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if that is it, right? Our mindset is going to determine whether or not we feel like this is going to work. And what I mean by that is that if you feel unsure, unclear if of what you're saying, that's what other people are going to feel. So how can you tap into your own energy, but then also 
have the confidence and mindset that what I'm saying is exactly what my ideal clients need to hear. How can you adjust your own mindset, whether it's through mantras, visualization, I can't talk, meditation, right? Um, I do this with my clients, my one-on-one clients is really helping them through meditation and visualization to attract those ideal clients. When you can confidently do it within you, that's when you see it in your external reality, right? Our thoughts, it's not only our thoughts that are creating reality, but it's the beliefs, the, the energy that we hold within our body. So if there's any stickiness in terms of believing that you can attract people, that your work is fucking phenomenal, that what you do is magic and is needed, if there's any stickiness in within that, it's going to show up in your messaging. It's going to show up in the people that you attract. It's going to show up in the way that you show up and that you, um, you'll not be consistent, right? Procrastinate, do all those things. So it's really important to look at that as well when you're trying to attract and magnetize ideal clients, okay? So I hope this was helpful in getting into the mind of your ideal client while still being your authentic self, how you can kind of meld your authentic self into these containers that you're offering to people um, and how your mindset plays a huge, huge role. So ah, that's it, my friends. I never know how to end these. Ugh, always. Anyway, um, any, let's see. Um, I have nothing else to say. But thanks for sticking around and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.